Hi, my name is Chen Zhang. I'm a senior from the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. This past summer, I participated in the show program here at the University of Michigan. I worked on a professor hotel and a PhD student, Genevieve Morgan. The title of my project is Investigation of Eddy Size Based on Particle Image Velocimetry. Particle Image Velocimetry, PIV, is an optical method of flow visualization. It also has velocity and vorticity characterization. Basically, it is a technique that enables the measurement of flow velocity at multiple positions in a plane. As shown in the right picture, the blue arrow indicates the water flow direction. Basically, the water flow is illuminated in the target area with a laser sheet. Reflecting particles are put in the water in order to image the water flow field. The camera is able to capture each light pulse in separate image frames. The two pictures on the left are an image pair. From each image pair, we can know the displacement of particles within a certain time difference. We use computer software to calculate the displacements. Here is a basic setup in our laboratory. The left picture shows the water tunnel. Water flow can be controlled through the settings of different water frequencies. The right picture illustrates the camera setup. A tripod is set under the water tunnel, and the camera is fixed on the, on the tripod, with the camera lenses facing upward. The camera is connected and controlled by a computer. Here are the laser components. The left picture shows the laser tube, which is controlled by the power supply shown in the right picture. Also, the laser is connected to the computer. The PIV software that we used in the lab is called PixelFlow, and the principal PixelFlow to find displacement between particle pairs is called cross-correlation. And here is a cross-correlation function, where f and g denoting the image intensity distribution of the first and second image. m and n are the pixel offset between the two images. The steps of cross-correlation are as follows. First, the image is divided into interrogation area. Then, the images from two exposures are cross-correlated using the function above. The displacement that has the maximum cross-correlation function value approximates the average displacement. And so we can use the displacement to find velocity and vorticity. In my project, I used two ways to find any size of water flow their vorticity map transect method, and numerical approach using MATLAB. Here is how the first method works. First, we cut the vorticity map horizontally, and then we can get the vorticity versus x-axis graph according to the transect. As you can see in the picture, the place where peaks appear indicates the location of the vortex core. So the eddy diameters will be the intercepts on the x-axis. This method is relatively accurate, but very time consuming. So I wrote a MATLAB routine, and we can get the eddy size and some other information more quickly. But the disadvantage of the MATLAB routine approach is that some errors are very hard to notice. Here is a demonstration of how the numerical method works. The initial output from the pixel flow is composed of three column information, the x and the y coordinates, and also the vorticity. After running the MATLAB code, the information is transformed into a matrix, which is filled with vorticity. Then, we can get the eddy sizes according to different methods. Here are the two methods that we used to find eddy size. One method is called 25% vorticity method, which is based on a paper by Dr. Apps and Dr. Tache. And the other method is called maximum circulation method, which is based on a paper by Dr. Drucker and Dr. Lauder. Here is a demonstration of the 25% vorticity method. The first step is to find the vertex core where the peak vertice is located, and then expand the eddy size until the vertice on the edge drops to the 25% of the peak vertice. So this is how the 25% vertice method works.
Here is a demonstration of the maximum circulation method. The left picture is the vorticity map, and the right picture is a demonstration. The principle is similar to the 25% vorticity method. First, find the vortex core, and then expand the eddy size until the edge reaches the maximum circulation. As you can see in the left picture, the half width of the wakes will be the eddy diameter. One application of PIV is to study the flow behind an array of cylinders which represents an artificial marsh. As you can see in the upper right picture, it is a demonstration of the setup in the laboratory. The diameter of the plastic cylindrical rods is about 0.64 cm, and the density of the rods is about 250 rods per square meter, which is a relatively low density. The bottom right picture shows the bird's eye view of the cylindrical rods. Based on multiple results, we come to the conclusion that the average eddy size is about 1.2 cm in diameter. And we compared the results of both methods, and we found that the maximum circulation method is more reliable than a 25% method. I'd like to thank the university and also Professor Patel for providing me this research opportunity.